asked to speak, and I, I want to tell you, I absolutely love doing this. I, I can tell you that every time I do it, get to speak, God blesses me so much before and after. And so I, um, it's really kind of cool because my mom's here today, and I invited her to come, but I didn't tell her I was going to be up here. So she's either going to be, uh, I don't know, we'll get there. But anyhow, um, last time we did talk, we talked a lot about what the devil does to us, his powers, everything he does to destroy your life. And every day he will do that. But today we're going to change up, and we're going to talk about what God does for us every day. So as I think about this throughout the week, um, I'm just going to start. I will tell you that uh, I, I did a lot of reading on this, and I found this one, and God always supplies me with everything. It just, if you ask, it will be there. If you expect it to be there, you know God's going to give it to you. I was talking to Charlie here the other day, and I told him I was going to do that. Well, how are you going to do that? I said, God's going to do it for me. He's going to tell me what to say. <clears throat> I will ask you to. This I will ask you to listen to the words. Take them in. If the Holy Spirit speaks with you, then you need to be doing something about it. But um, I do want to tell you as I drive down the road things come into my head sometimes. And those aren't mine. I mean, I'll be, I'll be having some windshield time, and there'll be, there'll be time I'll be just listening to Christian radio. And I heard this Christian song um, recently, and I've heard it a lot, but I really like it. And it's about this gal that talks about how she gets up late from work and everything's going bad and all this kind of stuff, and she was upset because she was late. But when she drove down the road... Here's this horrible accident. So this is really, and this is just some things that hit me as, I was, as I'm driving around, and I just pull over and write them down most of the time. But when you think about that, that's one way that God is going to protect you if you believe. And we're going to talk about that. I will tell you that um, some of this stuff is by Dr. Matt Tomlin, um, a very good uh, Baptist preacher. And uh, I'd like to read his stuff, and then I'll take it and kind of change it around. And, and, but anyhow, so the main thing we're going to talk about is the three things that uh, God will do for you if you trust him. But uh, before that, I want to read something that God told me, uh, that God has a purpose for all your pain, a reason for your struggle, and a gift for your faithfulness, and to not ever give up. I pulled over, wrote that down. I don't know if I picked it up in a song or whatever. So um, I'll do my best to get through this, and hopefully you'll be blessed as I was working on this project. But I really do enjoy this. So um, one of the things that we do in life today is that everything we do is stressful. It's, uh, it's a very stressful and confused age, and we are confronted by strange contrast of life all the time. Different people, the way they live, the way they talk. Life has changed for us. Although life usually rides along on an even keel, it sometimes fluctuates between extremes. It moves between extreme joy and extreme sadness. As you guys just went through, in those highs and lows. But I know you guys well enough that I know what happened was you hang on. You hang on to your Savior every bit of it. And that's what got you through it. And we're going we're to continue to talk about that. So it goes from uh, extreme highs to extreme lows, from health to pain from triumph to disappointment. It goes from mountaintops of spiritual experiences when God seems so very far to the valleys where God seems to be so far away but the, and the triumph of... Oh, I've got kind of messed up there, but that's all right. 
I'll try to figure it out here. From mountaintops of spiritual experience, when God seems so very near, to the valleys where he seems to be so far away. Life is sometimes confusing, sometimes enlightening. There are times when we are confident in our relationships. And other times when we are deeply hurt by those that we love. So if you think about your families, those things that have happened within your families, all the turmoil that can happen in your lives. Friends and family support us, and friends and family will let us down. We love, we hate, we are content, and we are discontented. What is the uh, number one problem that affects health of millions? The problem of stress. We live in a stressful age, and as I said before, confused age, and we are confronted by strange contrasts in life until we wonder who, we, who really are we? And if anyone cares. So when you get in that situation, a lot of times you hear from people, and I see it a lot, where people just lose hope. They they take their eye off the cross. They forget about who their Savior is. Because there's so much stress in the world today that they can't um, conceive how to take care of that. You ask, is there anyone with power who can do something for us? What about God? Does he have anything to offer us? Well, I believe he does. What can he do for us? I want you to know there are three things God will do for you. Number one, God will love you. This has been true since the first words in the, in the beginning, in the first chapter of Genesis, the very first words in the Bible, in the story of the beginning, God created all the creation, and he capped it off with the creation of man and woman. The only part of this creation that he created to love and to have fellowship with He created us. We're the only thing that he created that he can have fellowship with. Man is... Okay. So I do want to talk a little bit about that. The fellowship with God. Because this is just off the cuff here. But recently, I have a friend of mine that stopped in to the office. And... And there was a lot of things going on in this person's life. And we talked, and after a while, I said to this person, this, by the way, this comes from God, not me. I said, the problem here is that the devil is, is coming to your, he's controlling your mind. And what I want you to know and, and, and is that, um, and Bob's talked about this before. But I want you to know that God can enter your mind. He can hear your thoughts. He can understand this. But the devil cannot. So in order for you to be free of the devil, you have to order him away from you. And you can do that verbally. You have to speak it out. He can hear you then. So you, when you have those days, when you have the flat tire, and you forget to thank God for the flat tire that may have saved your life, but you've got to remember that a lot of things that's happening, and a lot of the stress is created totally by the devil, and you need to get rid of him, and you need to tell him every day. So you pray in Jesus' name. That this devil leaves you alone. He leaves your family alone, your friends alone, your co-workers, and everybody around you. 
in your Savior's name, Jesus Christ. You order that devil behind you, you tell him to stay away from you, your family, and he has to do that. But he'll be back. So you just need to be consistent with it. And um, later when I had talked to my friend, the person said, you know what? I told that devil, get out and get away from me. And, and so, uh, and I'm sure he did. But that's, okay. Throughout the centuries and the millennia, God has demonstrated his love for man. The Old Testament is a story of the deliverance of his people through flood coming out of Egypt and through Babylonian, Babylonian exile. God delivered his people. He sent the judges and the prophets to tell man of his love. Until the fullness of time when Jesus came, the very embodiment of his love. Now the same God that loved throughout history loves you today. When life frustrates to the low extreme, remember, God loves you. When moments of hurt and insecurity come, remember, God loves you. When no one seems to care about you, when you lose all hope, and we've seen that, people losing hope, suicide, things like that, remember, God loves you. When friends and family let you down, remember that the Son of God is your friend. Remember that Jesus said about himself, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. When you are disappointed, when you're frustrated, and when you face tragedy, as we all do and we all will, death, defeat, when you cry out from the depths and you have cried until your tears have dried up, Remember what? Remember God loves you. And that you're not alone. God loves you in all circumstances. Above all, when you need a Savior, remember that Jesus said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting love, life, and love. Point two. God will seek you out. That seems funny, doesn't it? Rather than you seek him out, he's seeking you out. The second thing that God will do for you is to seek you out. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they went and hid themselves. And they were in guilt ridden in their sin, and God sought them out. And they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool air. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? God took the initiative in declaring his presence to Adam and giving him an invitation to come into his presence. So God is seeking you out. That is the way God operates. He takes the initiative in inviting us into the presence. God took the initiative in sending his only son into the world to reconcile men to God. The call was issued and God sought men out, providing 
forgiveness for them. So you wonder, today God seeks you out. In the depths of your sin, God finds you and sends the Holy Spirit to convict you of your sins and draw you unto Him and invite you to salvation, everlasting life. In the depths of the problem of life, God seeks you out. He makes himself available to you when life is confusing, when life is depressing, when life is disappointing. When you're down in the valley, far from the mountaintop, God seeks you out. God comes to you in the good times. To remind you of your responsibility to share, serve, and support his kingdom, your church. You see, God's presence is always here. He does not have to cry out. To, we do not have to cry out to God and try to find him. He will, he is seeking us out. We simply have to open up to receive what he has to offer. That's what you need to think about today. Number three. The third thing that God will do for you is to care for you. God will take care of your salvation. We respond and God will take care of the rest. God takes care of us in eternity. For the Christian, there is no worry about eternity. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for us and you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you and to myself. That's where I am. There you are may be also. God also takes care of us in life. I guess you have to step back sometime and look at everything that goes on every day in your life and wonder, wow, what if it had happened this way or what if it went this way? But we don't think about that. We only think about the present and we only think about us. But really, if you look at things that happen in your life every day and you go, wow, thanks, God. Thank you for that. It may not be what we want, and it may not be in our timing, but thank you. He will take care of you in time of trouble, when tragedy comes, when you lose a loved one through death. When life gets hard, God will take care of you. He may not change the circumstances that you're in, but He will keep them from defeating and destroying you. He will give you the power to live within them, and He will be with you every step of the way. God will take care of you. He will enter your mind into your life if you will let him. That's the question. He will give you knowledge and power to live your life successfully. So I was uh, going through this and, and really enjoying it. And then this other thing popped up and I just thought I'm going to read that. And it's a it's a poem, and I'm not a poem guy. So for this poem to come to me, I was really, yeah. I've seen the, the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin's breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on, 
because He promised me never to leave me, never to leave me alone. In conclusion, that is what God has to offer you. Wow, that's a lot to take on. Sometimes we get so caught up in our everyday that we forget about these things. So, try to think about that as you go through the week. That is what God has to offer you in the midst of frustrations of life. This is what God has to offer you in the midst of a crazy, strange, and confusing world. He will love you. He will seek you out. And he will take care of you. Those are the three items. Just a couple other things that that came to me and I pulled over and wrote down before I conclude. So every day we make mistakes. And, and so I was thinking about everything that I do, that I do wrong, all the mistakes I make. And I still believe that God will always be waiting on me. He's going to be there with his hands out. And, um, you know, we get confused about everyday life. But remember, God has a purpose for your pain, a reason for your struggles, and a gift for your faithfulness. Don't ever give up. Remember, he always loves you. So if you uh, are here today, and I don't think we have anything planned, but if you're here today and you have not received Jesus as your Savior, if you don't know for sure whether you have eternal life or not, if you're confused and you don't know whether or not God loves you, you can come to the altar and you can talk to him directly. You can tell him your troubles. You can ask him to get rid of those troubles. You can ask him, give him your life to receive eternal life. If you haven't ever done that, or if sometimes in your life you think, wow, am I not sure? Or wow, maybe I need to... If you have anything, don't be afraid. You know, this life is not about your person sitting next to you or the person behind you. This life's about you. It's about you and your relationship with your Savior. You should never let that bother you. So um, I would invite you, if you want to come forward, if there's anything you want to talk about, anything you want to pray, I hope you were blessed. I hope you understand that God loves you so much. And he's always there for you. So, uh, that would, if you, uh, Levi, if you want to.